Hi folks, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in Far West Texas, minus the dogs. Why? Well, my knee hurts and it's too much trouble to walk them back and forth and it's too dangerous to have them out here right now. But we're going to do this video and I'm doing this introduction because I'm not sure whether I'm going to do, put this in as part of a vlog or as a separate video. But here's what I'm, what I'm doing. I'm unloading my new forklift battery. Whoopee! Well, I did that once before and it didn't go very well. Oh, I don't know, what was it, five, six years ago we, uh, we rigged something. But here, uh, what I've done here with my new power room is I've designed it in such a way that I can pick up, hopefully pick up and put down the big forklift batteries. Now, I've already taken the building use the building to take one of the dead forklift batteries. I dragged it over with the truck, picked it up, put it in the back of the truck, took it to El Paso where the new battery had been delivered, sold it for scrap, picked up the new battery and brought it home. So that's where we are right now. The new battery is here and at home. It's in the back of the truck behind me. The truck looks like it's sitting in a hole because it is. I've dug down eight inches to give me eight inches more of lift. The reason I did that is I built this building 99 inches tall. I didn't want to take and build up above that um, because I thought it would be too unstable. So 99 was about as high as I could go. Then you put a, um, a 2x6 on top of that. It takes me up to 105 inches plus the 2x6 that is the beam. Now, I'm doing a video about the power room, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I did want to tell you about the beam here. This beam is made out of oil field cribbing. Now, I know I worked the Alaska Pipeline, I've said that many times, but I didn't actually have anything to do with the construction. We hauled and, trans and uh, transported material up the Mackenzie River before the bridge over the Yukon River was built. All I was ever involved with was transporting material to the uh, pipeline. I didn't work on it, so I have no idea what oil field cribbing is, but this was oil field cribbing. It's a true 2x6, and it's all good solid oak. What I've done is taken three pieces, three, of the 2x6, bonded them together, and, you, and put them all the way across as a beam, um, and I've secured that beam so it won't tip up because it is cantilevered out, as you can see. So the idea is to pick the battery straight up, pull the truck out from underneath it, set the battery down, move the, um, move the block and tackle until I get, and, and pick it up, move it, set it down, pick it up, move it. Should have to do it, uh, well, three times, once and then twice more to get it in the position I want it. I'm going to leave this on while I pick this up, and I'll be cutting and editing it. Um, Basically, you'll be able to see if it goes well or if I drop the thing and, oh, and if I kill myself, hey, you get to watch a guy die. Let's go. So first of all, here in the doorway, I'm putting my arm on the inside of the doorway and you see the battery's just out of the inside of the doorway. So as I lift, hopefully we're going to pull it over just a bit. The beam is right here on the far, um, in my case, the far right edge here of the door frame and I did that on purpose because the batteries are going to go right along here. So let's pick her up. So right now the battery is free of the pallet. I'm just going to try to push the pallet out from underneath. Very good.
Okay, I can see right now I really didn't need to dig the hole, but that probably is going to cause me some grief and aggravation. I don't know if I can pull the truck out easily or slowly out of the hole. This is where they'll be. If there's going to be a danger or an issue, it's going to be right here. So let's see what we can do. That was about the clumsiest way I've ever done anything, but we got it. Now, just so you know, I'm not safe on the battery until it actually if it falls It is on the ground, folks. Now the other batteries I had weighed 1,680 pounds. This is a 1,000 pound battery. It's a smaller battery than those four I had because those four were way too big for the system. We're going to run two batteries at 24 volts in time, but I have to pay off the second battery so I won't have that for a few weeks. So we're going to start out with 12 volts. But let's get this thing in the position. It still has to come up about that high off the ground when I get it in position. So what I have to do now is move the uh, block and tackle. Okay, so I've moved the block and tackle now. I've got it again in the middle. I am actually a half a half a link off of dead center. All I'm going to do is pick it up just enough that it will slide into the building. Then we'll set it down, move it a, a, a second time. close to it. Need to be a little higher. Same thing again now.
All right, so I moved you folks so you were a little bit closer uh, to what we were doing, what I was doing here. It's going to pick it up and slide it all the way over here to um, this corner. The second battery, when it comes, will go right next to it, and then we'll tie them together to be to be 24 volt. Now at that point when I get the 24 volt system, that's when I have to buy the new power inverters one at a time. I can start out with 110 volt service because that's all we've had for the last year. But eventually we want to have the 240 or 220, so we're going to have 220 in here. That's why I need a second inverter. Plus 5,000 watts is not quite enough. We need more than 5,000 to run this household with. Uh, 8 is perfect, but I couldn't find an 8,000 volt, 8,000 watt. 220 110 uh, inverter. Here we go. No, we don't want that. We want to hold it down here. Right there. Now again, it's dangerous. One thing I don't want to do is be standing between the, the building and that battery in case it decides to move all at once. But I do have to be somewhat over here so I'm pulling the chain properly. Now you see it's moving an inch or two at a time. That's just what we want. I should be able to push down on it. Not really. Protect yourself at all costs. right here is just about where I want it. We're not skinning the inside of the building with anything. It'll just be bare two by fours and it'll be the uh, leftover um, uh, roofing steel that I have on the outside. Uh, we just need to protect it from the rain. It doesn't have to be protected from the cold or the heat. Now that's the position we want the battery in and of course the second one will go right here. But there's a major mistake, and I think you can't see the bottom of the battery, and this is one of the three mistakes I made with the other batteries that I had. This case is now sitting on the concrete floor. We don't want that. We want it on a pallet or something, and I've devised a system um, to put it on, but I've got to lift it up now. Oh, uh, let's see, three and a half. I've got to lift it up a little over four inches. All right, so I've tipped you at the ground. All right, I've tipped you guys down so you can see a little better. I've got it in position. This will keep any chemical reaction from taking place between the concrete and the metal frame. I didn't think I needed to do that because it had a metal frame. Well, obviously, I was mistaken because I got a terrible, terrible amount of growth uh, and corrosion from it sitting on the concrete. So we're not going to make that mistake a second time. And that is good enough. So the obvious question becomes, why didn't you just get a tractor and pick it up with the tractor? Why didn't you get a forklift? Why didn't you get a front end loader? 
Why not a tank? Well, it all costs money. And the whole idea of when I started this whole journey, which was way back in 2002, when we started this whole journey, is to show you how you can do these kinds of things with very little money. Now, in terms of money, to build this system here, I already had the block and tackle. Someone gave me the beams, so I don't have any money really tied up in it. I've got uh, let's say I've got four hours tied up in making the beam and getting it secure and everything. Would it cost me $300 to have a piece of equipment come out here and pick this up? So four hours, roughly $75 an hour that I earned by not hiring a piece of equipment. If you've got money to burn, no problem. But first of all, send me a bunch. The donate button's up there on the uh, main uh, channel page. Go to the main channel page, hit the donate button. Send me some of that money that you have to burn to rent a forklift or a tractor or whatever with, because I don't have it, and I could sure use it. We've still got this building to finish and a lot of other work to do. One more battery coming in a couple of weeks. Um, but for now, this segment on the battery is done, so... It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center with brand new power now saying see you later.